afternoon, everybody. It's Miss Scott coming to you from somewhere in front of a whiteboard to talk about how to write the formula for covalent compounds. So this is for my physical science students. If you are not and you come across this and you find it helpful, go for it. That's awesome. I will state, however, the compounds that we'll be naming today, they are covalent compounds, but they are limited to the binary ones, so things that have two two elements present with them, two components. So there are other naming conventions that we will not get to this video. I suggest you look elsewhere. There's wonderful resources everywhere. Just not right here right now. All right, but if you need to know this, here you go. All right, so last weekend I made a video talking about how to write the names of both ionic and covalent compounds, and I taught you how, or and I made a video showing you how to write the ionic formulas using that crisscross method. Crisscross with the charges. So I left covalent out. It's kind of the last thing, but I'll make a video for it anyway. Here it is. All right, your first step when you're writing covalent compounds, and it should be the first step with everything, is to determine, determine that it is indeed covalent that you're working with. All right, there's two ways you can do that for here. Remember a covalent bond consists of two nonmetals. So if you look at the name and it's got two nonmetal elements in it like hydrogen and oxygen or carbon and oxygen or nitrogen and oxygen, it's covalent. Another trick, if you're looking at something that is covalently bonded, the name will use the Greek prefixes that we talked about in the other video. So di and mono and tri and tetra, etc. based on how many numbers. For ionic names, or for ionic, the ionic name wouldn't have that. It doesn't have the, any numbers associated with it because we can use that other method. All right, so once I've determined it's covalent, it's pretty straightforward from there. Two, you'll write each symbol, and you always write them in the order that they were given to you. So if I have... Um, this name right here, carbon monoxide. My symbols would be C and O. Alright, our third, our third step you would write down any subscripts that you need and you figure those out based on your prefixes, what prefixes are there. Alright, so in this example carbon monoxide, there's no prefix in front of carbon, so we can assume there's only one of them. That's one of those exceptions to the rule. You don't have to put the mono first if there's only one for the first element. So a one would stay here. I don't have to write out a one. That's unnecessary. Writing the letter is enough. Monoxide, mono, there's part of your prefix. Mono, mono would be one as well. So monoxide, oxide, represents oxygen. I change the ending to IDE when I put it in a compound. So this is one oxygen. So I'd put a one right here. Again, that's not necessary because I have the letter. So carbon monoxide is just CO. All right. Another example, one that does have prefixes for each of them. Let's talk about... So tri nitrogen pentafluoride. So again, I know it's covalent because I have nitrogen right there. Fluoride, it's fluorine, after I change the ending to it. So I'm going to write my symbols, those are both on the right side. So I have N and F in that order because that's the order it's written. Tri here, a tricycle has how many wheels? Three, very good, three, yay. So I have three nitrogens, penta. Penta is five. The Pentagon is a five-sided building outside of Washington, D.C. Five fluorines. All right. Let's see if you can do one on your own. Uh, the sulfur hexafluoride. Pause the video if you need to. If not. Yeah, 
And I know that is going to be S2F6 dyes 2, 2 sulfurs, hexafluoride, fluoride is fluorine, F, hexa, 6. You have to know the prefixes in order to kind of understand how to write the formulas. If you don't have those memorized, I would suggest you do that first for prefixes 1 through 10. All right. So that's all there is to naming or writing the formulas for covalent compounds. If you have any questions or want some more practice, just comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.